Welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of July 12th, 2021. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. Impact, we're gonna talk about that on this week's edition of ACAP Today with members of our prevention team. We're gonna hear about how they're reaching out to local communities uh, at times of celebration to talk about some very important information uh, that folks across Aroostook County need to know. We're gonna talk with our prevention team in, or a couple of members of our prevention team anyway in just a little bit. But before we do that, as we do at this point, in each broadcast, we're going to first um, visit the news and information that you can use again for the week of July 12th, 2021. And we begin with uh, our open house event. It is this week, this Thursday, July 15th from 10 to 7, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks on ACAP today. It's the ribbon cutting ceremony at 10 o'clock in the open house through the rest of the day for our new ACAP facility at the Birch Street Community Center at the heart of the Presque Isle Housing Authority campus. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to come and tour the building, which is the community center on site at the Housing Authority, uh, look at the newly revamped playground, speak with our early care and education professionals, but also our prevention professionals and representatives from different programs here at ACAP that will all be utilizing the building and all have services uh, to offer to our community. You can also uh, meet our cook and our family coach who will be stationed at the center. There'll be some goodies there for you to sample. Uh, and we're inviting again the entire community, whether you're a resident of the Presque Isle Housing Authority or not, and whether you're even a resident of Presque Isle or not, we invite community members from all over Aroostook County to come and join us for this open house. We're gonna speak a little bit uh, in just a little bit with our prevention team members about what they'll be doing that day, as well as the other activities that they'll be doing. But again, please do stop by between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. for our open house at the Birch Street uh, Community Center. It's 37 Birch Street in Presque Isle. We also want to connect with you uh, in the coming weeks, um, this can be virtually, uh, to complete a region-wide community needs assessment. We have a survey that is now live on ACAP's website, and we're really looking to community members to provide their insights here. This is part of a statewide effort on behalf of Maine Community Action Partnership, uh, but it's also providing the basis for the information for ACAP's community assessment here in Aroostook County. We held focus groups recently that you heard about on this program, and we had great participation in those northern, central, and southern Aroostook County, but this is the opportunity for everyone to take a less than 10-minute survey, which is completely able to be completed online. We will have printed uh, versions of that coming soon to our locations and to some of our partner locations. Uh, survey participants who complete the survey will have the opportunity to win a $100 gift card. That survey, again, can be found on the ACAP website or our Facebook page. Please do share the survey with your friends, families, colleagues, and others in the community. The results of this community assessment, the comprehensive community assessment, serve as the basis for ACAP's strategic plan and how we serve communities across Aroostook County. So it's very important that we hear from voices across the region because we understand that there are differences in the needs in Fort Kent versus in Holton, and Caribou and Presque Isle and all communities in between. So please do uh, consider completing this survey online. It would be most helpful as we plan uh, future programs programs for the Aroostook County Action Program and to meet the needs of our community. Speaking of feedback, we are looking for your feedback if you have received an ACAP service in the last 30 days, whether that was in your home or at one of our centers, or even uh, if you connected with us remotely to have a service offered, we want to hear from you. Um, everyone can complete the short confidential survey. The results uh, allow us to monitor and improve our programs and to help meet the needs of the community. This, this survey can be found also on our ACAP website or Facebook page, and we'd appreciate hearing from those folks who we've served in the last month or so. We also want to share with you the news of our farmers markets. We're finally able to announce that we're going to be offering farmers markets this summer, both in Holton uh, at our 91 Military Street location there, as well as in Presque Isle. Uh, the first one here in Presque Isle uh, is uh, on July 21st, so next week, next Wednesday to be exact. Uh, that will be right outside of our 771 Main Street facility. Uh, the first one in Holton, there are actually a couple in Holton coming up really quickly. There's one uh, on July 12th. There's also one on the 19th of July. Uh, those are both Mondays. Uh, we certainly invite folks to stop by. You do not have to be a WIC client or customer to uh, enjoy the farmer's market. You can certainly stop by, but if you are a WIC customer, uh, you can use your WIC farmer's mar market checks uh, right on site at the WIC farmer's market. So please do stop by and check out the WIC farmer's markets, both in our Holton and our Presque Isle locations. 
the ACAP community covered. Uh, speaking of food resources in our community, we are we are very thankful to the University Credit Union for being our sponsor of the month for the community covered, the one located at the 771 Main Street Presque Isle facility. It is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And thanks to the fine folks at the University Credit Union for being our sponsor. It will be stocked through the month of July. You can also help stock the covered. We invite community members to stop by again 24 seven. The concept is uh, give what you can, take what you need, and we certainly encourage folks to uh, help us uh, stock the community covered in addition to the University Credit Union for this month of July. There are important changes to the checks a child tax credit, I should say, uh, coming this month. And we are encouraging all folks to start taking advantage of that. If you are a tax filer, a regular tax filer and have, have filed your 2020 taxes, you should be all set for this. But if you would like more information or if you are have not filed taxes in 2020, you will wanna go to the IRS website. The address is there, irs.gov slash child tax credit 2021. Uh, make sure that you do sign up for that. It's uh, several hundred dollars each month. Month, uh, in child tax credit uh, that is available for families with children under the age of 17 in the household. And again, more information on irs.gov slash child tax credit 2021. The COVID-19 vaccination uh, clinics continue across the state of Maine. Many here in Aroostook County are now just walking clinics, no appointment needed. We encourage you to look at the maine.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccine website to find out where the clinic is nearest you. Uh, and like members of our team here who have been vaccinated, we encourage folks to get their vaccines if you have not already. If you are in need of transportation to a COVID-19 vaccination sites, there also is a free transportation uh, program available. You can call 1-855-608-5172. You want to reserve that ride at least 48 hours in advance of your appointment or in advance of when you're looking to go uh, and do walk-in at a clinic for COVID-19 vaccination. The early care and education program across the Rusta County does have a few openings here and there, and we are encouraging families to call us if you are looking for childcare or if you are interested in the early Head Start or Head Start program for this fall, or if you'd even like to look beyond this fall at a potential future enrollment, it's always good to get uh, on a waiting list. Uh, you can call us at 764-3721, or you can go on the early care and education section of the ACAP website, and you can begin to fill out an application directly there. If you are in need of any assistance, uh, things that we haven't covered uh, in this edition of ACAP today, uh, or just any assistance at all, we do have ACAP navigators that are here to help at this time. Uh, if your family is struggling with any needs, this is a great resource to call and we can help connect you with resources both that our agency offers, but also outside of our agency uh, and uh, hopefully can be of help to your family. But we are here for you. Please give us a call again, 764-3721 and ask to speak with a navigator. A couple of other programs that we want to highlight, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Uh, this helps pay rent and utility costs for all eligible renters affected by COVID-19. And being affected by COVID-19 can include uh, the additional cost for things such as groceries. If your income, your household income has not changed or not increased, but uh, as well potentially has decreased because your hours may have decreased over the course of the pandemic, uh, you are eligible for the program if you meet the income eligibility guidelines. We did receive a notice of a change in this program uh, just in the last couple of weeks here, though, that individuals who are living in subsidized rental units are only eligible for the program after you have been unable to meet your rent. Uh, other renters have the opportunity to apply for three months at a time, um, but if you are in subsidized rent, you are eligible for the program. You just need to uh, apply in arrears, so after you have been unable to pay for your rent for that month, then you can apply uh, if you meet the income qualification guidelines uh, to be approved. So please do give us a call if you have any questions about that, or if you want specifics about the program, they're available on mainhousing.org slash COVID rent. Uh, you can also find the application there on the website, but if you need help completing the application because you're unable uh, to, to locate it online or unable to get online if you do not have internet, uh, for example, you can give us a call and we'll complete that application with you uh, online on this end. Time is running out. As a matter of fact, this is the last few days. Uh, on July 15th, the clock ends for the current season of the Home Energy Assistance Program. We will be reopening the program for the 2021 20. 
2022 season uh, in mid-August. However, that noted, there will be appointments that will be booked out from mid-August all the way through to January in some locations. So it will be difficult to get an appointment if you are not an existing Home Energy Assistance Program customer after this week. If you have not had an appointment yet in the Home Energy Assistance Program uh, in this current season between uh, last mid-April and today, for example, you are eligible to apply this season. So please do consider uh, if you think you might be eligible to apply to receive home, en home energy assistance before this Thursday. That's the deadline for this season. The income guidelines are on the ACAP website. I encourage you to check them uh, out. They have increased significantly over the last couple of years. So if you were eligible in past years or not eligible in past years, you might want to look at those again because you may be eligible now. And before uh, we uh, end our new segment, we just want to say that we are looking for help as well. ACAP's Community Closet, uh, which is at our 771 Main Street Presque Isle location, is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to anyone in need. No, we don't need volunteers around the clock, but we could always use help. A couple of hours here and there uh, would be most help to us to help us organize the closet, to help get clothing donations out that people drop off uh, on the racks uh, in the clothing closet. It would be most appreciated. Uh, volunteer that work can be completed between nine to four uh, weekdays. Uh, Sherry Locke is the contact person. Her email address is there, or you can call her directly at 554-4130. Again, if you are interested in volunteering. And that's this week's news and information that you can use. I'm very pleased now to welcome to the program two members of our growing prevention team. Meg Hegman uh, is the coordinator of prevention, um, and she joins us now. Meg, welcome to ACAP today. Happy to be here. And Robin Thurston is one of our community educators out there. And Robin uh, does a lot of work, especially with Drug Free Aroostook and the community coalition uh, that she works with uh, for that program that she and Meg both work, work with. But it's great to have you on the program as well, Robin. Thanks, Jason. So today we're talking about impact. Um, and Meg, for folks uh, who may remember, uh, about a year ago um, at this time, we started talking about this event that was going to be held at the Nordic Heritage Center called Impact. And you're sort of taking on that concept of what you had done at that wonderful event uh, in September of last year and are looking to sort of expand that. So let's talk about impact. We are expanding on it indeed. So um, we have kind of adopted impact stands for something. And we decided that it was uh, worth expanding that concept from a single event to really what our whole team does. And so it is for uh, empowering prevention with Aroostook County teens. And that name kind of bubbled up as a possibility for the event that we had in the fall at Nordic Heritage Site. Uh, but really it's what all of us on the prevention team do at ACAP is that we want to empower prevention for Aroostook County teens. So together our team provides opportunities for all youth so there's no income basis, there's no, um, there's no restrictions. So it's for really every young person in Arista County to build resiliency, foster compassion and generate hope. And we do that collaboratively within their communities. And so to that end, rather than having a standalone separate event that was kind of inviting people to join us, we are really going into the communities this summer to meet young people where they are, where they are already gathering. And so we're really excited about that development and bringing it to folks and meeting them where they are. So you've already been out. I mean, you're kind of, this is kind of like the Meg Hegman, Robin Thurston Roadshow and, and others, Elaine Sipe and others on a prevention team. Tell us where you've been and what the reception's like, and then let's look forward to, to where you're headed for the rest of the summer. Sure. So we have already been, and this is a photo of Robin and Elaine, one of our other team members, at Mapleton Days. And so they were out there for the parade and festivities at the Mapleton Elementary School. And then I was at the Aroostook Pride Festival at Spruce Haven on the 26th of June as well. Um, we were in two places on one day. And then we have also been at um, Midnight Madness in Holton, had a great time down there with our spinning wheel, which we will get to. And uh, let's see, we have also been at the Limestone July 4th Parade. I think that's everything we've been at so far. 
And then we have lots of different events coming up. So we will be at the open house that you mentioned at Birch Street on July 15th. We'll be at the Maine Potato Blossom Festival uh, in Fort Fairfield. And then we will also be um, in August, we have several different events. We will be at Acadia Days. The 13th and 14th will be at August Fest in Washburn on the 21st. And then we'll be at the Crown of Maine Balloon Festival the 27th and 28th of August. Um, if you have other events in different parts of the county, the other one we're looking at is um, Scarecrow Days in Fort Kent in September. So if you have other community events, we invite people to give us a call. We would love to be at your event um, and share the information that we have with you. You can look for that impact banner. You'll see that in the photo from Mapleton Days. Um, that will be the way that you can find us no matter where we are. So Robin, let's chat about the importance of connecting with the community in this way, because in your work uh, with Drug Free Aroostook specifically, uh, developing those community linkages and meeting people where they're at is critically important. How has this been beneficial to you, your program, um, and, and the goals of your program? Well, I just love these events. I love um, being with the community and talking with the community. And I think it, that's what this work is all about. I think it's connecting with the community and and figuring out and finding out what they need and, and the service that we can provide to them. For example, at Mapleton Days, I talked to several people about this program, which is a Dispose RX. So it's this little packet and primarily it's for people who are shut in. We have quite a few people in our communities that cannot get to um, a law enforcement agency to um, dispose of their um, unused prescription medication. So with this, um, this little packet, you take an empty pill bottle, okay? Or, well, you have your medicine in it, okay? But uh, this, this one's empty. But you have your unused prescription medication in it. And then you take this packet, you fill this with some water, two thirds full, take the packet, put it in here along with the medicine and the water, and then you shake it. You shake it, and then it is safe to dispose in your trash can. So this is a service we, we really um, are, are really excited about. I have made some contact with some civic organi organizations like the American Legion to perhaps um, do some presentations for, the, for our older population. So it's, it's those types of services. They're completely free um, and we have lots of resources. Um, you know, what parents need to know about marijuana use, um, you know, where, uh, youth can access alcohol, um, vaping, talking about vaping with children, um, and some keys um, that parents can, can engage in with their, with their youngins. Um, we also have this really fun activity book, um, and it's like full of just, you know, if you love to color, and it has some prevention facts on it that relate to marijuana, opioids, um, and vaping. We also have this awesome parent toolkit that talks about um, its operation prevention, which is part of discovery communications. And this talks about the opioid crisis, um, what is an opioid, um, how has it become a crisis, um, where do we go from here? Um, and those are all the resources that I can give out to people, totally free. And we do have some really fun swag. So. We have things like mat face masks, and we have hand sanitizer, and we have pencils, and we have bracelets. And that's always fun, especially to give to the little kids. So I really like to load them up with really fun stuff. What's been the response? And I'm curious to hear from both of you because you're sort of, you're going from community to community and you're seeing these celebrations all of which had a lapsed year. I mean, we were 18 months sort of all shut in and, uh, and folks really in Aroostook County, especially treasure these brief summer months where we actually get together as a community. And normally people coming out to these events on a, on a regular year, maybe haven't seen each other in a full year, but for many, it's been two or even longer than that. Uh, what's, what are folks saying, thinking, how are they both uh, re in engaging with you, but engaging with one another and sort of feeling like, gosh, this is great. So I have found even over July 4th weekend when it was really abnormally cold, honestly, for July, um, Holton Days or uh, Midnight Madness down in Holton 
was even though people had sweatshirts on, which felt a little crazy, really good turnout, really interested in interacting. So it was not the same, I guess, at some events previous years, I felt like people just kind of keep walking, just walk by and don't really want to engage. But this year, there was a ton of engagement. And I have to say, of course, this little guy really helped. And, and any age, I will say, once the spinning wheel starts spinning, every age person would stop it. that. And I'd say, spin a wheel, win a prize. Everybody's a winner. And suddenly they're right there with us. So um, the level of interaction was really good. And not only, certainly young kids are, are interested and in some of the information and some of the things that um, Robin was talking about are helpful to educate parents. Um, we have a little connect four game that, so, you know, younger kids can have some entertainment while their parents are talking with Robin or whoever is staffing the booth about things. But I will say this activity book that Robin mentioned, this is not, you know, most people hear activity book and think child, these are way too difficult for children, folks. These are sort of, you know, these are middle school, high school, these are adult um, activities really because it's just too fine a detail you have to be able to read you have to so so um we've been really distributing these to all different ages um, it does have factual prevention information and one of the things i talked about was how important it is for us to build resiliency we can do that for folks at any age and the first step toward prevention is really helping us of any age learn how to manage our stress because that's so often what triggers people to kind of self-medicate, to use substances because they don't have healthier ways to manage their stress. And so that's a big piece of what we're trying to do in the community. So we do have lots of other fun swag as well. We have, um, we have these uh, lanyards that say, it's not just a phase, bro. And that is to kind of counter the idea that, that vaping alcohol consumption, those kinds of things are, well, they're a phase that every young person has to go through. It's not true. Um, there are lots of young people who do not go through that phase. And so we're kind of capitalizing on that to say, not only is it not a phase that you somehow have to go through, you don't not have to go through it. And it's not a phase because these things are very addictive, especially for young people when they start experimenting. So um, this is actually a magic lanyard. You might wonder, Jason, what makes it magic? What makes it magic? Like I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to win it on the wheel because I'm playing, right? Just a bit. You but, are. I mean, you okay. are. <laughs> this is a magic because it has a flash drive in it. Oh, wow! Isn't that awesome? See That's you. Some value add right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good swag. Uh, we also have earbuds that are available. Um, these are have the drug free rustic logo on them, and so those will help. I don't know if you're like me, but my earbuds are breaking all the time. So there's never a bad time to get a new pair of earbuds. Um, and then we have these uh, notebooks that we have distributed through different, um, primarily middle school, but also high schools. And it's just a plain notebook you can use for school or as a journal or whatever. But it also has on the inside, it has resources that will help folks. So it has um, the quit link for helping to stop tobacco use or vaping, 211, which offers support for all sorts of different crises and uh, provide resources. And then we also have the Trevor Project information, which is to um, prevent suicide, particularly with the GLBTQ plus um, organ uh, individuals who are at such a high risk because of their high stress levels and discrimination that they face. So we have these available, we have um, the activity books, we have coffee mugs, we have all kinds of swag. Um, that not only is just a great giveaway, but also tries to provide some education and supportive resources for folks as well. Great. And, and Robin, the response and the events at the events that you've been attending, folks just genuinely glad to be out, but also glad to see you and engage with you. They are. And, you know, they're they're very inquisitive. They ask a lot of questions. And that gives me the opportunity to bring in some facts and some, some statistics and to answer some of those questions. A lot of misconceptions, especially when it comes to vaping. Uh, many do not realize that some of the chemicals in vaping um, include things like lead and nickel and arsenic. So very, very dangerous, very toxic 
um, particularly to our youth who are, who are still developing. And I think that's very enlightening for parents to hear. Um, it's also important for them to know that um, there are laws that if they, if they host a party um, and they can, if, even if they have permission from another parent, um, they cannot provide alcohol to that minor at all um, if they choose to host a party. It can be a $2,000 fine or it can be up to a year in jail. So I think the awareness of, of that for people is very enlightening. Um, I went to yesterday, the Prescott City Council approved two new marijuana licenses in the city of Prescott. One will be a new dispensary in um, the former Oriental Pearl restaurant. So these, um, these events give me the opportunity to inform the community about what's happening in their communities. It's uh, in addition to sort of connecting and, and providing people with valuable information. I know one of, if one of your colleagues who's on vacation this week, Elaine Cyper here, I'm sure she'd tell you that you can actually engage in a program or get started in a program such as her tobacco cessation program uh, through the connection that you can make at these events. So you may not be someone out there who's gonna pick up the phone and say, I need these services, but by virtue of a conversation at a festival, um, it might happen, right? And you can actually start, you know, get that process started right on site. Yes, we can. Great. Yeah, Elaine actually has a couple of different programs, Jason. So she can work with adults who want support in quitting. Um, she also has a program that is specifically geared toward young people. Primarily vaping is the, the uh, epidemic that's happening among our younger population, and she can support young people through that program as well. And it's it often people will think of an quit attempt, maybe they've tried to quit in the past, and they have not been successful, they've started back up again. Well, it can take up to 30 times for people to quit. So we encourage people to reframe that as, if you have tried before, you didn't fail, you succeeded for, maybe it was for two days, maybe it was for two months, maybe it was for two years, that was a success. Let's try again and build on another success and try to quit for a little bit longer next time. And you're way more apt to succeed in the long term if you have a supportive environment, you don't have to go it alone. So Elaine can really work with folks in a supportive environment and it's really helpful if you have a small group of people that's trying together to hold each other accountable. Great, so an awesome opportunity to not only get some valuable information, but to get connected with some of the direct services that we offer here through ACAP. Um, Meg, so I mean, I, the, the wheel behind me is just, it's tempting me. So now let's, let's, let's see what is attracting folks at county events to just swarm to you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So spin a wheel. Everybody's a winner, everybody gets a prize. So I will spin on your behalf because it's a little hard for you to do that through the Zoom uh, call. All right, so number eight. So each number has a question. This is kind of a tough one, Jason. I'm not gonna Jeez, You usually give me the tough ones. I end up playing I know. some, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I have to say the people in Holden were laughing at me because I hadn't used most of these yet. And so everyone I would pull out, I would say, oh, that's a really good question. And <laughs> every member of the family spun and every time I'd say, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> so this is true or false. Nicotine from an inhaled cigarette reaches the brain faster then from an intravenous injection, true or false? Gosh, I'm gonna say true. It is true, but that really surprised me, honestly. You... I, did it, I did it solely based on geography. Like I'm thinking <laughs> it's, just, it's the proximity <laughs> factor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's not the science behind it, but that was my, my basis for the answer. <laughs> but it, hey, it works. So that is a true statement. So it actually gets there faster if you inhale from a cigarette than even if you injected it in your arm. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and these are, we are adapting all of these so that we will have um, questions related to nicotine, as well as opioids, alcohol, marijuana. Um, so you never know, kind of like a box of chocolates, right? You never know what you're going to get from the spinning wheel. Um, but we will also have some different age-related questions. So young children who spin the wheel uh, might get a question like, is smoking good for you or bad for you? 
Um, you know, but that uh, that one, Jason, because you're way beyond that. I am I'm beyond that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'll let you choose your prize. We also have little fidget spinners, which are fabulous for kind of self management, basically. Um, when you are looking for something, we have stress balls, just something to keep your hands busy that can kind of help calm your mind um, as we lean in to being more mindful of our experiences and stress rather than trying to numb it. We can kind of power through it with mindfulness, with breathing techniques and with some tactile, um, tactile experiences as well. So if you see the wheel out there, you want to come spin the wheel and win. Oh, absolutely. Some really cool prizes and, and, and awesome things to learn as well. I mean, that's great. Absolutely. We will also, I'll say this. So um, we will be at a back to school night in Washburn this fall. And if any of your viewers are from school districts, we would love to come out and be present. If you have back to school events, um, we want to be there. We can help educate parents and caregivers about how to best support their children of all ages as they get back to school in a stressful time. We can give you uh, tips and tricks on how to help your young people manage their stress and help you manage yours because it's stressful to raise teenagers in particular. We can work with people on uh, hidden in plain sight, which is an opportunity for you to kind of look around a typical teenager's bedroom and, and find the things that might be right in front of your eyes that you wouldn't necessarily notice to look for. We can show you what current vaping devices look, look like. We can show you um, kind of typical hiding places where you might just wanna keep an eye out for signs of uh, not only drug use, but for signs of self-harm and dangerous um, behaviors that your young people your young person might be experimenting with, just hazardous signs that we wanna make you aware of. We can also do education. If you have a scouting troop, uh, we can, Robin's actually going up or will have just done a, a scouting troop in Fort Kent when this airs. And, and so we can help you get um, badges. DEA has a prevention badge available for Boys and Girl Scouts. So we can help you achieve that. We can go to a parks and rec department. Um, so whatever your community organization is, if you have a group of young people, we wanna meet you where you are. And we know our young people are crazy busy. And so we really wanna provide as many opportunities to go to you to provide the support and education you need so that our communities are healthier, so that our young people are more resilient, they have more hope. It's wonderful. So now let's look forward, aside from the impact um, on-site events that are happening in the coming uh, month, we're going to, again, uh, look for this team this weekend in Fort Fairfield, uh, and then coming in August to the Acadian Festival up in Madawaska to Washburn August Fest for the Balloon Festival, and then hopefully in September up to the Scarecrow Festival in Fort Kent. Aside from that, Robin, let's start with you. What, uh, what else is Drug Free Aroostook working on uh, that's to come? Well, in September, I'm actually, I've been allowed to put up some information in a display board um, for drug-free aristic and some of our resources at the Prescott Library. I want to keep that there for a month and I've been allowed to do that. So there will be a table set up um, for people to take some information, to have my information, to contact me about any of the services that the drug-free aristic provides. I hope to rotate that so it'll be kind of like a traveling library show. So I want to I want to go to other communities and other libraries. Libraries are very near and dear to my heart. I'm a former librarian, and um, that's a passion of mine is reading and education. And this is a way um, for the coalition to do that. Great. And Meg, what else is coming up uh, for prevention services altogether for ACAP? We have a variety of different things coming up. So we have. Um, in October, we will be promoting Sober October for really for all ages. One of the reasons that we know that young people drink alcohol and smoke marijuana is because adults drink alcohol and use marijuana. So um, when we are providing, when we wanna be good role models for young people, a lot of adults, especially through COVID have increased alcohol consumption. So we're really gonna be challenging people to take a step back, take a month off, assess your health, see, and, and 
be a good role model for young people to say, you know what, this doesn't define me. I don't have to have alcohol to enjoy myself, to, to be able to relax in the evening. There are other ways. And and that will model for our young people. So we are having some mocktail parties throughout the county in October. So we're looking forward to that. Um, it'll be a chance for us to make alcohol-free um, cocktails, basically, and, uh, and have a good time. So we're looking to do those throughout the county. We also have a new program that we'll be starting up in September. Um, we have been awarded a grant through Department of Health and Human Services, and we are starting a program called Breakthrough Youth. So that will be a program for young people, primarily ages 14 to 18, to really look at, at from a holistic perspective at how do we build resilience. Um, we will be improving kind of career outlooks, helping people kind of get a sense of what kind of careers they might like, and then working on soft skills, to increase employability, we'll be doing some substance use prevention, we'll be doing a lot of team building and helping people kind of live into their best selves, um, particularly focused around young people ages 14 to 18. And then related to career development as well, we would really encourage any employers who hire young people. We know that there is a workforce shortage in Aroostook County, and so we really want to try to address that by not only helping young people develop their employability skills, but helping employers recognize. It was surprising to me to know that young people who get a job outside of you know, the school environment or outside of babysitting, that sort of thing, their alcohol use, their risk of alcohol consumption actually goes up. And in large part, that's because of a cultural experience that exists in many workplaces that says, this is how we relax. As soon as the restaurant closes, you know, the wait staff get a drink at the bar. Once things, you know, whether it's a holiday party, there's very often alcohol at holiday parties and the cultural norm is that this is how we have a good time. Well, that translates to our young people. They're watching that. Um, and also it tends to increase access. So the places where young people are getting hired to work often increases their access to alcohol. And so we have a program that Robin is working with our community coalition as well as Power Prevention Coalition called the Young Employee Assistance Program. And we really want employers to gain an understanding of how that places their young people at risk because once people get um, addicted to substances or start misusing substances, whatever age they are, that increases employee absenteeism. It increases their healthcare costs. Um, we have the opioid epidemic affects everyone. So whether it's the individual who is battling opioid use disorder and they are not showing up for work or they are showing up for work in an altered state or whether they have a, a family member or relative who needs to get to rehab, that's still going to affect that employee's ability to function in the workplace. So we really need to approach these things from a community-wide basis. And our prevention team at ACAP is here to help you do that. Whether you are a young person that wants to get through this life and be the best self that you can be, whether you are an employer, a parent, grandparent, caregiver that wants to help your young person navigate this world in a healthy, supportive environment, we have a lot of tools at our disposal and we wanna support you and meet you where you are. Sounds like some good crossover program work with workforce development and other programs here at the agency as well. Absolutely, this is not a siloed approach. It takes all of us working together. Excellent, anything that we haven't spoken about on this edition of ACAP today that you would like to make sure the community knows about either one of you? I think the best way just... to reach us is at prevention at acapme.org. Go ahead, Robert. I think Robin. I'll just I'll just add that in conjunction with the power of prevention, Kim Parent and I have we provide tips training, which is for businesses, um, and we had our first training um, just the other day. And what tips does is it's skills based training, and it gives tools to meet the needs of businesses to prevent intoxication, underage underage drinking, and drunk driving. So the response that we had from this business was positive. It was. It was a review for us, for some, 
One was brand new at serving alcohol. So it was a whole new world to this server. So we, we really want to encourage um, restaurants um, that serve some alcohol to contact um, Kim Parent or myself um, to receive some tips training. Tips training is highly recommended in the state of Maine. It certainly helps uh, to ensure safety uh, in, uh, in, the, in the beverage industry in particular. So great information. Thank you both uh, so much for being my guests on this week's ACAP today. And I'll look forward to seeing you out and about at community events across Aroostook County for the remainder of the summer with the wheel. And awesome. a wheel win a prize. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> and some really great prizes. So check them out um, at the local community event next to you or closest to you. And if you want to see them uh, in action, please join us this Thursday at the Birch Street Community Center Open House where all of our other programs will also be uh, there present uh, with information for you. So it's a great time and great opportunity to get up, uh, get out and see some friends and neighbors this Thursday uh, from 10 to seven at the Birch Street Community Center in Presque Isle. We'll and be there. Yes, indeed. Uh, with that, before we head out uh, this week, I want to remind folks that um, we are uh, inviting members of the community to consider joining our team. Uh, we have openings across Aroostook County from the St. John Valley down to Southern Aroostook at this point. We're actually hiring quite a few new team members for a number of programs as we cycle back up for another fall of offering services in a number of them. Uh, there's a number of uh, benefits there that are listed on your screen. If you'd like more information on those, you can go onto our website. You can certainly call our HR office as well. We are currently offering a $500 sign-on bonus uh, for individuals uh, who make it through uh, six months of employment with us. We encourage you to uh, certainly uh, consider uh, providing us your application. You can do it through Indeed. You can do it on our Facebook page. Uh, there are many ways to connect and contact uh, with us. Uh, Meg and Robin are two of our wonderful team members that you would get to work with and collaborate with uh, across Aroostook County. And we would love to hear from you if you have an interest in employment with the Aroostook County Action Program. And finally, before we leave you, as we do each week, we share with you our snapshot of the week. Uh, we want to say thank you this week to the United Way of Aroostook for their continued support of three of our programs. This is a photo that was taken at the United Way of Aroostook annual meeting on July 7th. Uh, and these, this is Sarah Ennis uh, to the left there, who is the executive director of United Way of Aroostook and a great partner on many projects with us, along with Pat Good, Rochelle Roy, and Jeannie Fox, members of our team uh, representing various programs programs uh, from WIC to coaching uh, to early care and education who were there to receive um, the support that you members of the community have given to us through the United Way of Aroostook. And so we're very thankful to all of you as the United Way of Aroostook uh, for that generous support that allows us to serve people across Aroostook County and help fill the gaps where other programs would not uh, be able to meet that need in your local community. So again, thank you United Way of Aroostook and thank you to all of you who donate to United Way of Aroostook who may Made this possible. With that, uh, on behalf of the Aroostook County Action Program, I'm Jason Parent, again inviting you to visit with us uh, this Thursday on the 15th of July at the Birch Street Open House from 10 to 7, or to check out uh, Meg and Robin and other members of our prevention team at the Potato Blossom Festival this coming weekend. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and enjoy the Potato Blossom festivities and the festivities coming to an Aroostook County community nearest you as summer festival season is in full gear at this time of year. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you next week for another another edition of ACAP today.